If I could choose one superpower, well, that would be time traveling because I would never be late again. But if I could choose two superpowers, well, that would be mind control. My life would be so much easier, especially that I'm in business. Just, just imagine, and now you realize you want to buy my product. <laughs> Do we have any strategy end guys? Please raise your hand. <laughs> like, yeah, seriously, like, dude. And now you want to give me that job. <laughs> as a partner. <laughs> Hello, sweetheart. Dinner tonight, strategy end is paying. So imagine my excitement, which I felt when I heard that hypnosis actually works. I was 17, so I turned that excitement into reading books, attending workshops, practice, practice, and finally performing. And before my retirement at the age of 22, having hypnotized over 1,000 people, I actually realized that it works. And you have to know that I'm a very skeptical person. And that five-year career as a professional hypnotist also showed me that hypnosis is much more than just entertaining, entertainment. We can use hypnosis to help ourselves to improve our lives. Another thing that I learned was that we have still so many people who are afraid of hypnosis or who just don't believe in it. And that is why we asked you today to give us a word or a phrase that you associate with hypnosis. So um, let's take a look what we have. Well, mind control. Uh, control, thank you, thank you. Bullshit, oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> therapy, okay, those who wrote therapy can leave now. But devil, the, the devil is quite interesting because at almost every single show that I organized, and I organized a few of them, I always had to have at least one person who wanted to interrupt me because he or she thought that we we're doing devil's work. Well, you know what? Let's, let's do a short exercise. Can you all please stand up? Great, great. You're already hypnotized. <laughs> And can you please all put your hands like this, with your left palm facing up, with your right thumb facing up. And I want you to imagine that you put a huge, huge 30 kilo kettlebell on your left palm, and you attach helium balloons to your right thumb. And of course you know that if you really had those objects, your hands would go like this, because helium balloons are lighter than air. And now I want you to close your eyes, Close your eyes and start imagining that huge, huge kettlebell and those helium balloons that are going higher, higher, and higher with every second, with every word, with every breath. And now I want you to not move your hands, but open your eyes. And look at your hands, look at the hands of your neighbors, and you can sit down right now. And some of you, some of you moved. Are you all right? Some of you, I saw someone, someone here, like, the hands were like this. Some people, probably you didn't move at all. It's probably because of 30 kilo kettle base. Nothing for you. <laughs> but what I want you to know is that that essentially was hypnosis. This power of your imagination that changes, for example, your body movement. Another thing that I want you to know is that every single person in this room could be hypnotized. Sometimes it would take just a couple of seconds, like we did a minute ago, to start like a very light uh, state of, of hypnosis. Sometimes it takes a couple of hours of couple, or a couple of sessions, but every single healthy individual can be hypnotized. And of course, right now, some of you may think, oh, come on, Daniel. I'm a well-educated person. I couldn't believe that they could hypnotize me. And that is why we decided to record a short experiment with a few people who had never been hypnotized before. So I want you to meet Sarah. Sarah is a 
co-chair at TEDx London Business School. She's an MBA 2016 at London Business School, and she's a very smart young professional. However, she's not an athlete. Let's take a look. When I will say three, I want you to start pushing your hand down. I'm going to try to push it back. You want to push it down. Uh, when I will say sleep, close your eyes and relax yourself. Harder, 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 and more and more and more. Just keep it just going deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. Just go deeper. And now I want you to imagine that you, your body is getting stronger, stronger, and stronger. And you will feel more and more comfortably with every second, with every breath that you take. Super, super calm. Super, super calm. And of course, some of you may think right now, well, I'm not an athlete, but I go to gym from time to time, and I could do that without hypnosis. Well, I'd like you to meet Marie and Daniela. They both masters in management students at London Business School, and when they were three, four, five years old, they acquired a very important skill, counting from one to 10. Let's take a look. How do you count for one to ten? One, two, three, four, seven, eight, nine, ten. And can you please count my fingers like one by one? One, two, three, four, seven, eight, nine. It doesn't work. <laughs> so can, you, can you quickly count for one to ten? One, two, three, four, seven, eight, nine, ten. Can you quickly count for one to ten? Three, four, seven, eight, nine, ten. Well, that's a very important skill to have, so we had to teach them again how to, how to do that, and we have a proof uh, of that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, All right. Sarah, how do you count for one to ten? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right. <laughs> and Marie, well, she's not a mathematician. And usually now I would get, okay, Daniel, but if it's not black magic, how does it work? So in order to say that you were hypnotized, we would have to have two things. First of all, we would have to establish an acceptable selective thinking. If I told you right now that when I snap my fingers, you will forget your name, you would probably think, first of all, how is you snapping your fingers connected to me forgetting my name? And secondly, how could I forget my name? It is my name after all. In hypnosis, you would focus only on one aspect of suggestion, of one selected aspect of a suggestion. And secondly, we have all forgotten, we have all forgotten some obvious things in life. For example, uh, this formula at a maths exam or a date at a history exam or some anniversary. So in hypnosis, if I asked you to forget your name, when I asked you after hypnosis, what is your name, you would just have this emptiness. The same emptiness that we all know when you forget something extremely obvious. The second thing we would have to have is to bypass a critical factor of our mind. And in order to know what is a critical factor, we have to understand how our, how our mind is constructed. So first of all, we have a conscious mind. It's some sort of a personal computer that analyzes and rationalizes everything we do or think about. It's also an excuse generator. We smoke because we like it but did you like your first cigarette? We eat at night because we're super hungry, but is that cookie a perfect thing to eat at midnight? And finally, we cannot finish our project because that kitten video on YouTube is so fascinating. <laughs> but would you watch that video when you were with your friends on a party? That's what I thought. Beneath that, we have a subconscious mind. It's like a core part of our brain where all the emotions and habits are coded without those excuses. So for example, you may smoke because as a child, you saw someone smoking surrounded by many friends and you associated smoking with a social status or with something that adults do. 
And finally, we have an unconscious mind which takes control over uh, our automatic functions, for example, digestion or heartbeat. And a heart and a critical factor is, we can say, a bodyguard of our subconscious mind. It rejects all the suggestions that are not coherent with our subconsciousness. And you may think, yeah, it's a good thing because you don't want to forget your name when I snap my fingers. However, how many times have we all tried to change something in our lives? For example, quit smoking, stop procrastinating, etc., etc., etc. All those suggestions are not coherent with our subconsciousness, and they go to the power of will, which is not that powerful. So when we want to stop procrastinating, we usually do that tomorrow, and tomorrow never comes. And of course, in hypnosis, without the critical factor, the suggestion goes straight to subconsciousness with your consent, so we can change something much quicker. Another interesting thing about hypnosis is that when you connect your brain to an EEG, you will see that your brain emits theta brain waves, the same brain waves as you have in the first stage of sleep. So although you hear everything what's going on, you have a full control, and uh, you can open your eyes at any point you want, your brain emits the same brain waves as if you were sleeping. But if I, want you, if I wanted you to remember one thing about hypnosis, it wouldn't be theta brain waves, it wouldn't be critical factor. I would like you to remember that hypnosis is a very strong feeling of inner focus. That is right. <laughs> focus that can change the movement of your body. Focus that can change your perception, for example, of smoking. Focus that can improve your life. And we have multiple examples how hypnosis can improve your life. In 2007, Professor Montgomery published a clinical study on 220 breast cancer patients. And he proved that 15-minute sessions of hypnosis every day, reduce post-surgical pain, reduce fatigue, and reduce discomfort. Just words. Just imagining that you're moving to a distant, distant location in which you can calm down, relax, feel comfortable. <coughs> and as it is TEDx London Business School, I have to also mention that he proved that using hypnosis, 15-minute session of hypnosis, brings $772 in savings per patient. <laughs> Thanks to less time in surgery and less anesthetics used. And by the way, how many of people here smoke cigarettes? Please raise your hand. And how many of you have ever tried to quit smoking, but you still smoke? Please raise your hand. Right. Well, I'm bringing you good news. In another study, it was uh, proved that hypnosis is three times more effective than nicotine replacement methods. And it is 15 times more effective than trying to quit alone, just with the power of our not-so-powerful will. Um, another question. Anyone here doing cocaine? <laughs> uh, uh, just, just kidding. You don't have to raise your hand, but let me... <laughs> Let me rephrase that question. Um, uh, do we have any investment bankers here? <laughs> I hope my boss doesn't see that. <laughs> well, in another study published in 1993, uh, a study on a cocaine addict who was taking five grams of cocaine every day. And by the way, I'm not a proficient cocaine user, but um, five grams of cocaine... <laughs> that used to be 500 bucks per day. And that's for the uh, drinks after TEDx. <laughs> anyway, at some point, she decided to quit cocaine. 
she had three sessions of hypnosis for several months, and hypnosis was the only treatment method that she had. And in 1993, when the study was published, they said that she had been drug-free for nine years. Just words, just imagination, just the power of our mind. And some time ago, I heard another story, a story of a Guinean singer, Alana Kante, who had a throat tumor, and she had to have it removed. And her surgeon knew that one small mistake, one millimeter right or left, and he would end her career. And he decided to be less conventional. Instead of putting her into full anesthesia, he hypnotized her. He hypnotized her and he told her to imagine that she's moving to a distant, distant location where she can calm down, relax herself, where she can sing. And during the entire surgery, Alana Kante was singing. And thanks to the vocal cords movements, her surgeon knew where to put his scalpel and where not to. The surgery was successful. It was covered by major news such as BBC, The Times, Le Figaro. And that leaves me wondering if a cocaine addict can kick her addiction out of her life, from her life. If a professional singer can sing during the surgery with her throat cut open, why aren't we using hypnosis to overcome small and bigger challenges in our lives? Phobias, lack of motivation, public speaking fear, procrastination. And now I would like you all to close your eyes. Close your eyes, relax yourself, and I'm gonna count from one to three. On the number three, you will open your eyes, but before that, one. Now when you know that hypnosis is a legitimate psychological tool, I want you to, two, start imagining what could you overcome with hypnosis? I want you to think what challenges you could kick from your life. And now I want you to get more and more motivated and excited and more and more curious about the incoming talks. And please, three, open your eyes and thank you very much. And this is how, ladies and gentlemen, I hypnotize 500 people to give me all their money. Thank you very much.